Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Waiting on God means you got to be quiet and still. And that is the hardest thing for us to do. Because we want to talk, we want to say something. We want to sound spiritual. Oh God, my God, my God. Oh God, 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 God. Be still and know that I am God. So let me just give you an easy homework assignment. If you have to, start with 30 seconds every morning. Don't try to take on more than you can. Say, bless God, I'm going to wait on God one hour every morning. Because I can tell you, you won't do it. I'm only up to about 10 minutes and I've been at it a long time. <laughs> Amen. Now I spend a lot of time with God, but I mean, I can only handle being totally quiet for just a few minutes at a time. Because <laughs> I'm one of those active, busy. Amen. But I see some of the most amazing things happen. I see God make changes in people. He makes changes in me. I see changes in situations and circumstances that just leave me going. That had to be God. And that's what he wants. He doesn't want us to think, well, praise the Lord, I'm finally disciplined. Now I can give everybody lessons on discipline and self-control because I am now have a master's degree in discipline and self-control. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on now. Anything that comes real easy for us, then we cannot understand why it's hard for somebody else. So God doesn't want us to think that we got things just because of our own determination and our own will. Although you need that. You need determination. You need discipline. You need to, you need to stick with things. We need those things. We need to make good decisions. That's all part of it. But you can do all that and still just have a bunch of pieces and not be able to tell what the picture is. But when you spend that time with God, in the Word, praying, reading a good book, and don't make praying some big religious exercise. Just talk to God. God, I am such a mess. I don't know how you put up with me. But Lord, I do love you. And I'm grateful that you're not going to give up on me. And God, I want your will in my life, so don't even give me what I'm asking for unless it's what you want me to have. And now, God, I went to that Joyce Meyer thing the other night, and I heard all this teaching on discipline and self-control. And I was convicted in about 99 areas of my life. <laughs> and I know I can't just attack them all at once, so God, just pick one. Shine your light on one, and let's go. But nothing's going to work for me, God, if you don't help me. And then I suggest you just walk around all day murmuring, help me, God, help me, God. Help me, help me. Oh, my God, help me, help me, help me. Help me, Jesus, help me. Is anybody with me? Now, how many of you can readily see that we get all full of ourselves and our ideas are good, and we get our plan, And then we don't understand why it's not working. And I really believe because so often we just leave God out of the loop. And I believe that this can be a real major key for some people here and some people watching my TV. I don't even know how to tell you how my life changed when I learned this. And I didn't have the privilege of having somebody teach it to me like I'm teaching it to you. I did read some books that really helped me that were written back in the 16th century. Because I think we got off into an area in the church where everything was about using your faith to get what you want. And God wants us to have the desires of our heart, but he says, delight yourself in me. First, <laughs> delight yourself in me, and then I will give you. You don't have to struggle for the things that you want. Delight yourself in God, and he will give you 
the desires of your heart. Worship Him and wait on Him and tell Him you're nothing without Him and you need Him and you know that you can't be successful at anything without Him. It's yet to be seen what God could do through a man or a woman that will give God all the credit and all the glory. You know, I get a fair amount of compliments and I'm grateful for the, all the encouragement that I get, but a lot of times, even while people are complimenting me and telling me how great I am, I'm saying to God, well, we both know the truth, don't we? <laughs> we both know what I am without you. So start spending that little bit of time waiting on God. Let it grow, let it grow, let it grow. And you'll be amazed at what God will do. I'm determined as I teach you on discipline and self-control not to throw you into another work strip, but to get you to understand that even though we do need to grow, and it is going to require decisions and commitment, none of it's going to happen if you don't spend time with God. So we don't want to be in works of the flesh, which is our energy trying to do God's job, but we do want to do the works of God. Let's look at a couple of scriptures. John 17, verse 4. Jesus said, I have glorified you down here on the earth by completing the work that you have given me to do. So we don't want to get into works of the flesh, which is our own plan trying to make things happen, but anything God tells us to do or shows us to do, whether He shows us in His Word or He shows us by His Spirit. You know, sometimes you read something in here and it just really convicts you. You're like, well, I got a long way to go. But then there's other times when maybe you're just doing something. You're in a conversation and all of a sudden you get a conviction from God that mm, you shouldn't be talking about that. Just, just be quiet. Or maybe sometimes you're getting ready to buy something or you're signing on the dotted line for something and God knows it's going to really put pressure on you, but you've gotten emotional. Now you're about to make a big mess in your life and you just don't feel right about it inside. You know, that's really what hearing from God is. A lot of times it's just a knowing you don't even know how you know, but you just know that it's something that is not what God really wants you to do. And it's very important that we obey those promptings of the Holy Spirit as well as obeying the written Word of God because if we don't, we're never going to be what God wants us to be and have what He wants us to have. Father, glorify me, Jesus said, for I have completed the work that you have given me to do. Years ago, I read that one day and I just started weeping. I wasn't even real sure why I was weeping, but it had a profound effect on me. And I began to pray at that time and I still pray, God, I want to finish the work that you have given me to do. Don't be a mediocre person who's always halfway up the hill and halfway down. Just kind of an average, okay, do whatever you have to do to get by. But make a decision tonight that if you're going to be a Christian, you're going to be a real one. And you're going to be one that glorifies God. And you're going to be one that seeks God and knows you're nothing without Him. And that you're going to let the Holy Spirit work with you so you can be conformed and molded into the image of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul in Galatians 4, 19 told the people, I'm going to stick with you and I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to teach you the Word until Christ be molded in you. And I have that same attitude. I am not going to leave you alone until you become all that God wants you to be. And if you don't want to do that, then you're wasting your time turning on my television program because everything I say is going to aggravate you. Because I'm not going to tell you just what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what God is saying. And I think if every time you go to church and you hear the word, you can just kind of sink down in your pew and just feel all ooey and gooey. Oh, praise the Lord. Take a little nap every now and then, sing a couple of tunes and go home, then something's wrong. You need to be somewhere where the Word of God is being preached in such a way 
that it's not only comforting you and encouraging you, but it's also convicting you and rebuking you and helping you to constantly come up higher in your walk with God. I get excited about that kind of thing. John chapter 9, verse 4. We must work the works of him who sent me and be busy with his business while it is daylight. Night is coming on when no man can work. So Jesus was pretty intent on working the works of God and avoiding the works of the flesh. Let's look at Ephesians 2, verse 3. Among these, we as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves in the passions of our flesh. Now Paul's talking to Christians. And he said, okay, now this is the way you used to be. But you're not going to be that way anymore. We once conducted ourselves in the passions of our flesh. Our behavior governed by our corrupt and sensual nature. We obeyed the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind. Our cravings dictated by our senses and our dark imaginings. We were then by nature children of God's wrath and heirs of his indignation like the rest of mankind. But God. Aren't you glad that God interrupted that mess in your life? But God, but God came and literally got in the middle of us. Do you know that God is in the middle of you? Your spirit is in the middle part of your being and God has moved in there. He came in and he cleaned it up and made you holy on the inside. That's why the Bible calls us saints because God cannot dwell anywhere that is not clean and holy and pure. So he cleaned us up on the inside, and now he's saying, I want you to learn to live from the inside out. Come on, give God praise. So everybody say, I've got what it takes. And you do. You have everything that you need to be everything that God wants you to be. But it's not gonna happen overnight. God works on what I call the law of gradual growth. Little by little, he delivers us from our enemies. I did a Praise the Lord show for TBN this morning and had several guests on talking specifically about how we have a goal or a vision for our life and many times it seems like that our life is going the opposite direction of what we feel like God is saying and Pastor Mike who's been up here helping me with some things had a very good analogy he said anybody who leaves New York to go to California wants a non-stop flight I'm sure that you'd like to hear this message tonight and next week be a very disciplined and self-controlled person. You'd like to have a drive through breakthrough. <laughs> well, you can get a drive through hamburger and you can get drive through photos and you, they even have drive through church now and you can get drive through cleaning. I mean, it's amazing all the drive through stuff you can get because we live in an instant society. We have instant everything. But you can't have drive-through breakthrough. To get a breakthrough, you got to go through. Amen. And so, the airport in St. Louis used to be one of the major hubs, and you could go just about anywhere nonstop. But now, because of all the changes in the airlines, you got to have layovers everywhere. Well, some of you have got a layover in your life right now. You got on a plane in New York headed for California and you had to stop in Chicago and Phoenix. And they told you it was going to be a two hour layover and something happened, the next plane didn't get there and you had to stay there two days. And That's kind of the way things are with God, you know. We'd like a, a non-stop flight straight to victory. Woo! Went to the seminar, bought the shirt, got the CDs, praise the Lord. Woo! Discipline and self-control. 
But I can tell you, there's going to be some layovers, and it's going to take longer than you thought, and it's going to be harder than you thought, and cost you more than you ever thought you could pay. But someday you're going to wake up, and you're going to have the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Don't be a wimpy person who's afraid of everything hard. We don't have the power of the Holy Ghost in our life, so we can be a bunch of weak, weak wimps. I, I can't do that. It's too hard. Well, you know, I just wish that I had discipline and self-control, but I'll tell you what, if I see one chocolate chip cookie, I got to eat a dozen. I mean, now how do we think we are ever going to take authority over the devil if we can't even conquer a chocolate chip cookie? Well, I just wish I was stronger, but I just don't know. No, I just don't think I can do that. Some of you think that there is no way that you can resist certain things. How many of you like ice cream? Well, I do too. And there's, there's, there's a couple things I really like. I'm kind of stuck on carrot cake right now. Mm, as long as it's got about that much icing on it. I really like the icing more than the cake. So I'll even scrape icing off of other parts of the cake and put it on my piece. <laughs> but I discipline myself to only eat dessert twice a week. And when I do, honey, I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> and I make an event out of it. I want to be in my chair, certain places. I plan for it. I, the day I'm going to eat it, I discipline the rest of my eating that day. I don't eat much bread, I, you know, and I'm, I'm, so I'm ready for this cake. Well, it would not be pretty if somebody would tell me at the last moment, you ain't getting that cake. <laughs> so let's just say that you love ice cream and you've been disciplining yourself for a long time. And now you're going to reward yourself, you're going to have ice cream. You got the place picked out where you're going to have it. You know the kind you're going to have. You know what you're going to put on it. You can taste it. You're ready to go. You say, I love ice cream. That's my weakness. And I cannot say no to ice cream. Well, I want to say, yes, you can. You say, no, I can't. I love it too much. Well, I'm going to prove to you that even as much as you want that ice cream you've waited for, that you could say no. Imagine yourself inside the largest ice cream parlor in the world. They have every conceivable flavor of ice cream and every kind of topping you could possibly imagine. More than your highest fantasy, they have it in that store. The clerk behind the counter asks you, what would you like? Name it, I'll make it for you. You tell him and he makes you the largest, creamiest ice cream delight you've ever seen. Hands it to you along with a large spoon. Now here comes my question. Can you right now put down that ice cream. And some people are going to say, no, <laughs> there's no way. I can't do it. Well, let's add a little something else to the story. Just as you're about to heap a spoonful into your mouth, you hear a click. You feel a cold metal object touch your head. Out of the corner of your left eye, you catch a glimpse of a large, hairy hand holding a gun to your temple. A deep voice says, if you eat that ice cream, I'll blow your head off. Now let me ask you a question. Can you put that ice cream down? Well, you see, the point is, is we can all say no if we know what the consequences are. Now let's talk for a minute about consequences. Because one of the things that's going to make us hungry to line our lives up with the Word of God is knowing that there's really bad consequences if we don't. Now, can I be undisciplined and go to heaven? Yeah, probably, unless your undisciplined gets you over into a lot of terrible sin. But let's just say you're just kind of lazy, you don't keep a nice house, and you're in debt up to your eyeballs. and. You know, you don't take care of yourself, and you haven't disciplined your kids, and everything in your life's just a mess, and you don't really discipline yourself to be in the Word. You just don't use any self-control. You say what you want to, think what you want to, do what you want to. I can stand here and tell you that I don't think that's going to keep you out of heaven. 
because we're not saved by our discipline and self-control. We're saved by truly believing that Jesus died for us. But yet the Bible says real faith, if it's real faith, will have works to back it up. And so if you fall deeply in love with Jesus, which is a step beyond going to church, you know, I separate my Christian life in two parts. When I was just a religious Christian and when I became a serious Christian. And I think anybody who becomes a serious Christian, and that's why I'm kind of trying to push you over the edge tonight and get you hungry to say, okay, enough of playing church, enough of being religious, and just kind of hoping I get by with it and go to heaven anyway. I'm going to just get full on in this thing, and I'm going to ask God to mold me into His image, and I'm going to start consistently, one by one, tackling the things that I know that God's been dealing with me about with the help of the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to pray and study in those areas, and I'm going to wait on God till I have victory in that area. You have nothing better to do with your life than spend every moment trying to improve. I said, you have nothing better to do with your life than to spend every moment trying to improve. Now, I think a lot of people can be undisciplined and carnal and still go to heaven, but I'll tell you what they won't be. They won't be happy. They won't be peaceful. They're going to have every misery imaginable. But the worst thing, the worst thing is they will never glorify God with their lives. And that should just frighten us to the point where we say, my God, please don't let me live like that. Please don't let me live and die and leave no legacy here that can glorify you. Please don't let me be a person who passes through here and never really strives to be an obedient person who just lives for myself and what I can get and what I want. God, please tie me to the altar if you have to. But don't leave me alone. God, do not leave me alone until I'm at a point in my life where I can glorify you with my thoughts, with my words, with my actions. Help me do your works so I can glorify you. Is anybody here ready for some of that in your life? Well, in order for that to happen, you're going to have to learn how to say no to things that you should say no to, and yes to things that you should say yes to. You're going to have to discipline yourself to get away from some things that are poisoning your life. Even if it means you're going to be lonely for a while. And you're going to have to discipline yourself to stay some places that you'd like to run away from. Because God's actually using that place where you're at to do a work in you. You're going to have to stick with some people that you would love to punch in the nose and never see again as long as you live. But God is using them as sandpaper to rub the rough, rough edges off of you. Oh yeah, I'll say it again. God is using them as sandpaper to polish you. Well, just to cheer you up a little bit before I let you go, what are some of the perks? It's absolutely mind-boggling. Abundant life. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that you could ever dare to hope, ask, or think. He's the God of more than enough, not the God of barely get by. He wants us to have blessing, total forgiveness of all of our sins and freedom from all guilt and condemnation. Grace, mercy, favor, joy, peace, righteousness. Strength, ability, might, power, authority, health, and prosperity. Good relationships, including knowing God and having an intimate relationship with Him. Protection, security, safety, wisdom, the ability to make right decisions. 
the enjoyment of God's presence, the promise of knowing Him and the power of His resurrection. I mean, I could have pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of the blessings of God. And I want to invite you to be a spiritual hog. You say, what do you mean by that? I've determined if God can bless anybody, He can bless me. If God can do something that He promises to do for anybody, He can do it for me. If there's a hundred things God wants to do in my life, I'm not going to settle for 90. I want to press in and press on and be all that He wants me to be, have all that He wants me to have, and do all that He wants me to do. And I'm ready for higher levels of discipline and self-control in my life if that's what it's going to take so I can be more obedient to God, so I can glorify Him with the life that I have. Everybody give God a big praise tonight. Well, godly discipline is the only thing that will produce what you say you want in life. A lot of people say they want things, but then they don't want to do what they need to do to get them. And I'm encouraging you to put both of those pieces together and you'll have a great result.